Haida Park is one of the largest theme parks in all of Germany. This Merlin-owned park features one of the country's best coaster lineups with 9 of them, plus some intriguing non-coasters. So in this video, I will rank the top 15 rides and attractions at Haida Park. And before starting the list, I want to note that Limit will not be anywhere near it. This is among the roughest Vacoma SLCs, and it's a ride I have no intentions of ever re-riding again unless it gets brand new trains and restraints. Number 15, La Ola. This Zier Wave Swinger has your typical speed and cycle, offering a fun breeze, but this one is made better by its elevated placement. The ride is on a pedestal which grants riders views of the mostly abandoned section of Huss Flat Rides in the back of the park. Number 14, The Giant Slides. This park is famous for this giant tower with a variety of metal slides. The tall spiral slides are a bit too tight to gain any real speed, but I like the ones one level down with the extended straightaway. You fly for the first two thirds until you hit some serious friction. Then there's also a weird one down a set of rollers. It's a little bumpy, but unique. But my favorite thing about this tower is the full panoramic view it offers of the park. Number 13, Groton Blitz. This mock powered coaster has a tame and simple layout with some helixes, but one of them takes place in a cave past some statues and trees. These visuals elevate what would otherwise be a garden variety junior coaster. Number 12, Draken Grotte. This slow boat rides the anchor attraction in the How to Train Your Dragon section of the park. The outdoor section has some nice plants and miniatures. Then there's an indoor section past some larger dragons, culminating in hiccup facing a rival dragon. I wish there was a little more dark ride elements to this attraction, but it is a solid experience providing a change of pace from the thrills. Number 11, Wild Wasserbahn. This mock log flume has a scenic journey and it's set back from the hustle and bustle of the rest of the park. The first two drops are tiny, but the final one has some heightened speed to it. I just wish the logs had some padding because the hard benches are uncomfortable on the splashdowns. Number 10, Magic. This rare flat ride from Huss is basically an inverted breakdance, which is ironic because it's literally across the midway from an actual breakdance. The ride was down my recent visit, but I rode it back in 2019, so I'm showing footage of the one I recently rode at Marineland. You get good G's in the tight spins before the rotation of the cars unlock. Then you get some nice whips when the spin of the arm and cars sync up. The cycle is pretty short, but it is a solid spinning ride. Number 9. Big Loop. This Vacoma Looper has a nice location along the water. The first drop gives a pop of airtime, and the two loops are quite forceful. Then the rise book ended with two fast corkscrews and an okay helix. While this isn't the most ambitious looper, it is noticeably smoother than others from the same time period. Number 8, Bobbin. This mock bobsled has a really unique layout and location. The rise has a lot of similarities to Six Flags Magic Mountain's Ninja, except in bobsled form. This rise has a short lift at the start, then it winds its way down a large hill before navigating a bigger lift at the end to return back to the station. The ride isn't overly forceful outside of some mild G's, but the ride is good length for a bobsled, and the middle part gains some surprising speed, especially in that enclosed helix. This causes some fun swinging at points. Just make sure to lean forwards because the bobsled will vibrate from the slad troth. Number 7, Mountain Rafting. This Intamin River Rapids ride has a surprisingly long layout. The ride goes through caves and past some buildings, and it has no shortage of water effects. You have several rapids that send sprinkles into the boat, particularly when you run up next to a wave machine. But the waterfalls will get you the wettest, the big one will get your back, while the double side one misses everyone. And it's also comical seeing how many boats are in the trough at once. They even bump into each other at points. You'd never see that in America. Number 6, Ghostbusters 5D. I want to begin by saying that I am a huge Ghostbusters fan, so the music and theme really gets me amped up. Using this IP for a shooting dark ride is brilliant. I think the ride system works well. The screens are crisp, and the shooting mechanics are different than other shooters because you need to hold onto a ghost after hitting it to simulate what the Ghostbusters do when trapping a ghost. I really like that element of the attraction. 
I just wish the scenes utilized the franchise's most iconic ghouls and villains more. Instead, you just fire generic ghosts. Still, the Rise a well above average shooter. Number 5, Crocke. This Balgar Mabiar dive coaster looks very cool. The signature 90 degree drop is excellent, offering some good floater airtime. And then you pass through the shipwreck. The cool visuals continue as you skim over the water and create a massive splashdown that soaks the midway. The rest of the layout is pretty simple, even by dive machine standards, but the Immelman and Bunny Hill weekly lift riders out of their seats before you hit those final breaks. And this ride's immaculately smooth, which is the case with most dive coasters. Number 4, Scream. This is an excellent drop tower that is much better than their namesakes at the Six Flags parks. Intamin interestingly converted one of the park's former observation towers into this 33-story tall gyro tower. The ascent offers great views of the park and surrounding area because you rotate in the way up. Then, the drop is exhilarating. There's no warning. The initial release gives a decent stomach drop sensation, and then you float the entire way down. Number 3. Desert Race. This is a small intimate accelerator coaster, but it still packs a punch. The hydraulic launch doesn't have the same max speed as the others out there, but it's still abrupt and forcefully yanks you down the track. Then the layout maintains the speed well as you alternate between some decently forceful turns and great S hills. All four hills offer solid ejector pops, and like most intimates, the ride is very smooth. Number 2. Flu der Damonen. This is my favorite B&M wing coaster. It has such a fun, diverse layout. The wing over drop has some hang time before whipping you back down to the ground. The speed hill gives sustained floater airtime better than most hills in a B&M Hyper. The Immelman is a nice mix of strong positives ascending and some airtime descending. Then the final three inversions, including the one-of-a-kind demonic knot, offer good laterals and whip up front, and superb hang time and back. This ride also some neat visuals between the theming and use of terrain. And coming in, number one is Colossus. The original Intamin prefabricated wood coaster may be running the best of out of all of them. The ride's recent retracking has it running smoother than most steel coasters. Colossus has a nearly identical start to El Toro. You have a steep first drop, two giant camelbacks, a large turnaround, and a speed hill. Those first three elements are incredible, and if you're in the back, they're about 75% of El Toro. You get some great ejector airtime on the drop and camelbacks. Plus, the valleys have good positives for a wood coaster. The middle section, like El Toro, isn't quite as strong, but you do get a little floater on the turnaround and speed hill. Then Colossus deviates. You enter this giant helix. It has some weak laterals, but it's pretty slow and really hurts the ride's pacing, which is otherwise superb. Then you have three final bunny hills offering pops to semi-sustained floater airtime depending where you sit and that final hump takes place in a theatrical statue that shoots flames out of its head. This is a worthy top coaster, and if you love El Toro, you'll likely love this coaster, and I cover that in my review. So those are the top 15 rides and attractions at Haida Park. Is Colossus your favorite as well? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.